So, how many know that we have the good news? Yes. And that word good news means several things. I've preached on it over the last few years. I've preached on it for years and years. I've even touched on it again the last year. But the good news is, is, a, is a, one, is that you've already won. It's a, I, I'm going to butcher the word off the top of my head this morning, but it's like, it, it, it kind of sound, it, it kind of breaks into the Greek word goes into evangelism. It's you, you, you and It's E U A U G Y O N, and uh, how you can pronounce that in your own head however you want. And so, but that means is that what they would do is they would be out fighting a battle, and they were keeping the battle away from the walled city so that all the people that were weaker and less than would be protected. They didn't want the battle to come to their home turf. So they would go out and fight the battles away from the city. And when they had won, they, that, that word they would use, and they would send the good news back to the city and tell them, don't worry, this battle's not coming to you. We've already won. The good news is, is that the battle's already won and it's not going to penetrate your walled city. It's not that there's still not a fight going on. It's that the good news is, is that he's already won. Come on, I'm going to preach it again. That's the good news. And everybody gets the good news proclaimed to them, but everybody gets to decide what they're going to do with their good news. Are you going to act upon it? Are you going to believe upon it? Are you going to stand in faith on it? Or are you just going to go, boy, that sounded nice. I've seen that work for that preacher once. Come on, the good news. How many of everywhere they went proclaiming the good news, uh, the signs and wonders followed? Look it up. Just type in gospel, good news. Everywhere they proclaimed the gospel, it says signs and wonders followed. Because when Jesus went down to hell, he got keys to death, hell, and the grave. He went victory over every spiritual darkness, every wickedness. He never has to feed it again. He, he, he whipped it all right then. Amen. That's the good news. And so when you show up and you proclaim it, you take authority over that area, every one of those spirits there, you're canceling the assignment of the enemy. But you, life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you don't cancel it, if you don't proclaim the good news, those assignments will still reign. Right. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Some of you need to start. He said, you say to your mountain, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, he said, you say to your mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and it shall be removed. You proclaim the good news to your mountain. You're canceled. Then go tell if you, everybody can see your mountain. You can go tell everybody all about your mountain. But are you canceling your mountain? Are you departing the good news to your mountain? Hey, I, the battle's already won. 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 <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom. And that's the good news. And we're going to get into some other stuff today that isn't so fun. Is why if everybody has the good news and everybody can declare the good news, why doesn't everybody's good news work the same way? Everybody's got the same seed. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. He said he gave to every man a measure of faith. That's a five-gallon bucket. It only takes a mustard seed to save your mountain removed. You've already heard me teach tongues. You know, it's like lifting weights. The more you lift it, the stronger your faith gets. Amen. Nobody's born super faith-walking crazy lunatic like me. <laughs> and I still have to struggle some days lifting weights. My weight's just getting heavier, it seems. It's been real with you. But I've learned to proclaim the good news. You, you know, the Bible says the prayers of a righteous man avail as much. It didn't say the prayers of every man avail as much. Right. Right. Come on. The one that 
knows their God and does great exploits. They learn to speak and declare the gospel. And when you declare the gospel, signs and wonders follow them. Does that mean the devil's not going to show up? He's going to show up with his mouth and he's going to see where your gospel's at. And you may have to fight the good fight of faith. But everybody has the opportunity to use the gospel. But we're going to go into shift in a moment. But not everybody that hears gospel works the same way. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of it has to do with your character. Not who you think you are, but who you really are. Do you know sometimes when I look at my character today, I'm going to be honest with you, I still don't like what I find. Now, am I here to beat you up? No, I'm here to grow you up. And if you don't really ever take an inventory of yourself, you're never going to grow up. Because I learned something a long time ago. God can't fail and I'm the weakest leak in there, so I'm usually the one that needs to work. And sometimes it's not about me, but just bear with me with the message that God has for today. Amen? Now my pages are there. We're going to start at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7. And I've been touching on this. We'll start in verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. I'm going to tell you the church is full of wheats and tares. But wheats, and, how many know a tear doesn't know it's a tear? They think they're wheat. They're deceived. But you know how you can tell the difference? I'm going to tell you, it's really easy. And if you're, if you happen to maybe be here and you think, well, am I a tear? Yeah, I'll tell you how you can find out if you really want to know. Start looking at your fruit. Tares don't bear fruit; they bear thistles and thorns. If everything you do is rubbing everybody around you the wrong way all the time, and it's always, you know, and it's always hard and always struggles, then maybe it's you. Well, why are you beating on me for? Because I want you to change and I want you to really get a hold of the gospel, the good news of God that says you've already won. Remember how we started? That's the point. To be a living testimony of the goodness of God. To have the good life now, abundant life. But if every time God comes along and tries to grow you up, you ball up, you're never going to grow up. You're going to be a two-year-old growing temper tantrums. So, he said, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs of thistles? So which one are you making? How many know it's not hard to look? And usually you can ask people close to you. If they're honest, they'll tell you. Most people don't want to know. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. It's not hard. Just look at the fruit in your life. Did you know when I was a baby Christian? I, sometimes I think I had about 10% good fruit and the rest of it was trash. But here's the thing, I didn't stay there. It's seed time harvest and I kept putting the right seed in the ground and I kept letting God prune me. When I would find stuff in my life, when I still find stuff in my life that doesn't edify or glorify God, I don't, I don't shrink and hide it. I stick it on out there. I repent and I turn from it and I let Him cut it off so that something profitable can grow in that area. Come on. That means you've got to allow somebody in your life to speak to you and if you only have yes people around you, you've already lost. It's easy to find somebody to tell you what you want to hear. Or to find, here he's even something worse. If you're offended or you got women talking about offenses, if you got something going on, you can always find somebody to agree with you, whatever you think ain't going on right. But it takes a man or woman of God to go and examine their own heart. Because you can't change anybody else. I hate to break it to you. But you can change you. And when you change you, you can get happy. You can get the gospel. You can get authority over that thing. Then you can start interceding for that other person. And you, what, 
the prayers that a righteous man availeth much, then you can start changing things. Then you can put the pressure on somebody else to come up and out. It ain't always about you. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. I see some of you. I got a lot to share this morning, so just hold on. So every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Does anybody want to be cast into the lake of fire? No. Do you think God's playing games? No. Then why is so many people playing Russian roulette with their lives with Jesus on a daily basis? Can we just be honest this morning? You know, as a pastor... I'm, my job is to watch out for your soul and make sure that you make heaven at the very least. At the most, it's to help you reach your destiny because God has something only you can do. But if you don't work with me, it'll never happen. It just won't. I can tell you where I can tell you where some of you are supposed to be going and doing, but you've made your mind up to do something else. So I'm just going to see how long the, the frustration wheel will go. I hate to say it. There's nothing I can do. Are you hearing me? Yes. But my job is to watch out for your soul. And that's to make sure that you get to enjoy the abundant life now. And you'll never enjoy the abundant life if you're always like Saul was, kicking against the pricks. Every time there's a correction, he would kick against the pricks until he had to have a Damascus Road experience. You know, a lot of times people, if you would just preach happier messages, Pastor, people would come in. If you wouldn't have to be about this or that, well, then nobody would grow. You know, my job is to make you feel good, is to make you good disciples, so in the last days, you're bearing forth good fruit. And that when all hell shows up in your life, you know how to fight and stand and keep a smile on your face and not faking it. You're really living it. That's my job to train you and give you every tool you have to be able to overcome the enemy and laugh in his face. Amen. But if you don't work on yourself, I can't help you. I can just keep presenting it every week. Around and around we go. Where we stop, nobody knows. Lord, I'm off the variable round. I feel that way some days. I know. I, yeah, we'll keep going. I got a lot. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. You can't judge me. I just, the Bible just told me to look at your fruits. Right. By the way, that scripture, it, it chaps my hide when somebody quotes that. It shows me their ignorance. Because the Bible says, take the beam out of your eye before you go take the splinter out of your brothers. That means I've got to have dealt with it in my own life so I have compassion upon you before I go and try to help you with yours. It didn't say leave you in your sin as a man of God. It spoke told me to look at your fruit so that I can know how I can help you. Not beat you. And if you receive it at beating, it's because you're not ready to deal with it even though God's ready for you to deal with it. Because he sent me there as pastor to help you. Boy, I'm preaching straight this morning. Y'all still here? Amen. Not that everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, I prayed and I got dunked in 1942. I'm saved. Listen, if you ain't got no fruit, you ain't saved. Right. Gee, Satan knows how to all the scriptures too. The Bible says if you confess in your house and Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And then it goes on to say, if you produce fruit, I'm paraphrasing. If He's Lord of your life. Right? If you were put on trial today for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? No, preacher. Well then, don't let don't let condemnation come in. Make it a challenge that you're going to make enough evidence to get convicted. Amen. Do you know it's amazing how many lost people try to tell me how a pastor is supposed to act? You know, we're supposed, 
Uh, we get treated less than a used car salesman these days. But we're supposed to be man, be pan, be walk in love with everybody, never offend anybody, and just smile and take all of your abuse and tell you how great you are and how much you're going to make that. That's supposed to be our job, I guess. Nowhere did I read that in the Word of God. Right. And by the way, those kind of Christians are miserable. Because they're not even Christians and they have no leg to stand on. I know, strong preacher this morning, man. So how many want to make heaven? Yeah. We're just getting started. i got a lot more to go. We're even going to get a revelation today, Lord willing. I'm really going to tear you up. <laughs> but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, are you doing His will? You know, His will isn't just shut coming to church on Sunday. You know, I preached here a while back. We were doing the fair and I joked and I was talking about the 10% and then, then the offering that goes with it. And it's physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. But anytime there's the work to do at church or ministries to do at church, like 1% of the church shows up to do it all. That's not you giving your life to God. God called you to this church. You should be supporting it in every area. Right. Yeah. Anything less than that, you're not doing is with point blank. Right. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. That's the word. Don't like it, take it up with him. So many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied my name? If he can use a donkey, why does people think do working in gifts makes them something super special? Amen. He used a donkey to prophesy. But everybody wants to say, because God used me in this, they try to use that as some kind of badge of honor. They must be living right. He'll use whoever he wants, whenever he wants. That's not the qualifier your fruits are. Still with me? Yeah. And in my name have they cast out devils. His name is powerful. His name will make stuff happen. But you know what? They didn't just know his name. They also knew Paul's name because Paul had the fruit to back it up. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from you, you that work iniquity. You that got bondage in your life, you that ain't got stuff that ain't living right, beat feet. You ain't making heaven. Sorry. Do you know how many people in this Laodicean church and every other church that got talked about in Revelation that's manifesting right now are not going to make heaven? Because they're not living accordingly. And no one is holding them accountable. Because when you preach like this, everybody says, oh, you're just being hard. Oh, they're here today. You should just support them. You know, people tell you, well, if you don't like how your people are responding, preach something differently. Well, you know, if they would respond to what God is preaching, I could preach something differently. Right. Amen. <laughs> right. I could... Listen, I want to talk about... Who wants to, I want to go do the good news. I want to go into highways and byways. Be casting out demons, see the dead raised, sickness come up. But how many know it's not just me? Jesus sent His disciples. That means I should be raising disciples that are doing that. But if it's drama 24-7, drama is a good sign all the wrong fruits coming out. And nobody's dealing with themselves. Boy, he's preaching this morning. I'm just getting started. He said, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from your work of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things and sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Those that took my word, which is the seed of God, and planted it and put it and let it grow and made me their foundation, they're going to put their lives upon a rock and when all hell shows up, they're going to stand the test of time. 
How many want to be that one? And then the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, well, I'm trying, preacher. Man, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. And if you're not doing it, be smart enough to repent and turn from it and start trying better in it. Amen. Amen. But stop saying you're doing it when your fruit says otherwise. Amen. <laughs> come on and then by the way if God sends me to talk to you he's done tried to talk to you two billion times and you chose not to listen so don't be offended with me because you chose not to listen all the other times God already tried to deal with you I'm just doing what my boss told me to do you think I want to show up and have that conversation with you do you really think that's something I enjoy do you think I, I Praise God, I get to go have confrontation today and go deal with somebody that really don't want to deal with something. Yay me! <laughs> Come on! But if I love you, what am I going to do? I'm going to go deal with it and pray you receive it. Because I know you're not going to like the options if you don't. And then if you don't, I'm going to keep praying because that's who I am. Until something breaks. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not should be like a foolish man. Anybody want to be a fool? No. Which shall build his house upon the sand. Anybody ever tried to build anything on the sand? Yes. <laughs> it don't last. No. I mean, I had the fun here a while back of simply putting up this ridiculously large pool my wife wanted. <laughs> and getting that thing, and you got to have those things perfectly level. I mean perfectly. Otherwise, you're in trouble. And we had quite a few ordeals. I think I preached on a different few of them years ago. But, you know, the what you don't, you can't have water, can't, can't rain, because anything will mess up your level. But how many Christians are trying to build their life on sand without doing it and wondering why they have no foundation when the storms come? Right. Yeah. Oh man, he's preaching this morning. Why? Because as soon as we're, we're made to believe in a gospel that doesn't preach correction and exhortation. And so that whenever it comes, we instantly put up the hackles instead of receiving it and changing and being built upon a rock. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. So, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was its fall. Amen? Amen. So don't be that guy. Turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I quoted this a while ago. Well, let's just read a couple of these. Matthew 9. It says, uh, verse 22, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith has made thee whole. Verse 24 says, Give place. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth, and they laughed him to scorn. Now, a lot of times we won't step out in faith and do these kind of things because we don't want to get laughed at. Now, if they laugh Jesus, the Son of the living God, to scorn, what makes you think they're not going to laugh at you when you start stepping out in faith to believe these things? The devil's going to laugh at you. The doctors are going to laugh at you. Your lost family is going to laugh at you. But Jesus still said it. And how many know He was proclaiming the gospel? He was telling her, Hey, listen, it's already won. And the dead were raised. And then there was a blind man down in verse 29. And Jesus said, 
you believe I can do this? They said, according to your faith, be it unto you. It was according to that man's faith. Not Jesus' faith. Jesus already had all the faith he's ever going to need. Some people go, why isn't it happening? And you know what? When you tell somebody they need to strengthen their faith, do you know what happens? Their hackles come up. And they get offended. Bless God, I've got faith. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? Well, if you had faith, really, you'd be moving. If you really believed it, you'd already reached over the unseen realm and pulled it into the seen realm. Now, we all go through things. It's faith over fear. Fear never goes away, but you can choose faith over it every time. Either you believe the Word of God or you don't. When you don't, it becomes evident. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. So if Jesus, if, if what you're praying for was being given to you according to your faith, now is there times you go through things? Absolutely. I've been standing in faith and there's some times I'm going through some trials and different things and my faith is still solid. How do I know? Because I'm still standing. But some people don't like what they're receiving but they refuse to examine their own faith in the matter. So then go on now. Verse 35, key verse here. And Jesus went about in the cities and villages teaching the gospel of the kingdom. We should still, we should still be proclaiming the kingdom and the gospel and the good news is that the battle is already won. And then what happened? And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. That should be the heritage we are leaving as believers. Either it's all true or not true. I don't want to read about it. I don't want to have a dead religion. I don't want to have a dead faith. We see healings and miracles around here all the time. But just because I'm not a guy that doesn't promote it all the time doesn't mean you shouldn't be excited about it when it happens. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted or scattered abroad and sheep having no shepherd. So after all the healing, all the stuff, these people were still just, they had no faith. And he had compassion upon them. He didn't throw them away. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send word laborers into his harvest. He's like, send for, listen, these people are lost. We need some men and women of God that have got faith that are going to examine and have the fruit to carry these things forth. So the seed is the gospel. Everybody gets the seed. Everybody gets the gospel, right? Everybody gets the good news. Alright? Some of it fell on the Road. road. Didn't make it. How many know the road it's just going to get trampled on? And how many know if you let it fall on the road, you really didn't respect it much? You didn't see the value of it, did you? I mean, a lot of times people today, it comes in one hand and goes out the other. Right? Now, I want you to notice something else before we go on. We're talking to God, people that are supposed to be God's people in every one of these. Do you see that? Alright, what's the next one it falls on? The rock. Now we're not talking about the good rock. We're talking about someone who already knows it all. Their heart's hard and they're not receiving nothing. No matter how good the gospel is, it can't penetrate their hard heart because they've already got their mind made up how it's going to be regardless of what the Word says. Still with me? The next one, thorny weeds. I mean, it gets in some ground, but they're going to believe the world more than the Word. Well, you know what the doctor said. Well, 
my grandma had this. It's just a hereditary thing. Well, it's just something we all deal with. Well, that's not what the word says. The word says you're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Build all things to become new. Is that true or not true? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, well, I know. I know what the word says. I'm going to believe the word. The good news is. By his stripes I was healed. Well, it's not manifesting. Well, they still had something that wanted manifesting, but by faith they latched a hold of that promise. Either here or heaven, it's going to be so. I will not change my mind on it. But what kind of fruit do I have in my life? What kind? What surface am I putting my seeds in? Come on. Be honest. Look at your fruit. What kind of area are you putting your seeds in today? What is prevalent in your life? If I was to come up and I was, as your pastor today, I actually have the right to do this. If I came up and just started listing off your fruit and the good and the bad and, and just gave you a report card today, you would probably not be happy with me. But would you be able to see it before I wrote it? Or would you be offended with me after I did? And I'm not saying there's not people that are doing good things. I'm not saying everybody in here is doing horrible things. I'm just saying are you willing to look at the things you're not so that you can change them so that whenever we can make the gospel more effective because we all are getting the gospel. We all are getting the seed, but we are not seeing the seed come to fruition. Can I preach it straight? All right. Now the seed that fell on what? Good the good ground. Now most people go, I'm good ground, I got good ground. Well, if we're good ground, we see what happens. The gospel, sicknesses are being healed, dead's being raised. That is the gospel in fruition falling on good ground. And it didn't just say that's just for pastors. Well, God's not moving in that way now upon the earth. Man, take your New Age crap and shove it some other place. It doesn't line up with the Word of God. Pardon my thing, but I get so tired of that. There's another one I want to tell you all. There's, you know, the, the devil works in partial truths. So I'll go ahead and tell you one. You know, I'm very apostolic. I'm a pioneer. I don't say this much. I don't go around. I, I, I know I operate, I operate in apostolic anointing with all the ministries I found and all those things, but I don't. You've never once seen my Apostle Brian Williams on all the stuff that I've done. So, you know, years ago I had trouble just with the pastor part, but I realized that I didn't put that in there. It hindered people from receiving from me as their pastor. Okay? But. Do I know as a, I operate strongly in prophetic gifts? Not everybody does. The people that operate in the prophetic gifts, we're black and white. We're yes and no. We're very dun, 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 dun. But then what people have done is they said, well, I operate that way so they feel like it gives them a license to be a jerk. Right. Well, the Bible says if I have the fruit of the Spirit, there's love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance. Nowhere does it say, oh, well, if I operate in prophetic gifts, i got a free license to be a jerk. Now, am I more duck, duck, duck than most people? Absolutely. It's how God made me. It's part of my prophetic anointing. But if I'm a jerk, I still don't have the right fruits and my fruit ain't going to bear forth fruit because it's falling on the wrong part of the ground. Right. Am I preaching straight enough now for you? Now, how did I learn that? Because I found it. I found it and I had to do something with that bad fruit. Whenever I was in immense pain, and I still am, you know, everybody would say, well, he's just hurting, and everybody gave me a license for being a jerk. And now, maybe not a jerk like you're used to, but you know, when you're in pain, you're not always happy, happy, happy. Right. But how many know that the Spirit of God doesn't care and shouldn't care? He should rule over every one of those things. So guess what I did? I cut that off, and I cut off the excuse to act like a jerk because of pain. And I held myself accountable regardless of how I felt. Big smile, come on. I'll use me. You got dealing with you? Let's deal with the fruit so that we can start bringing forth the harvest. Amen. So now, good ground. So now we see what we need. Now, look at the yellow. Who hear God's teaching. Every one of them heard the teaching. 
Every one of them was in church. Every one of them heard the same thing, but not every one of them had the same outcome. Come on. I've been coming to church for 40 years. <laughs> I don't know if that's something to brag about. Because your fruit should be it's about the same as a two-year-old. Now, if I told some people that, they would be what? Offended with me. Good thing I'm teaching on that. <laughs> but seriously, if you're still sucking air, God's still trying to perfect you. Why? Because He wants to make His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In order for his kingdom to expound, we have to work on our seeds we're putting in the ground and line them up correctly. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, notice everybody heard God's teaching. Now, every one of them have a but, but one. You know, when your butt gets in the way, it always makes a mess. <laughs> God's butt's the only one that changes things. But every one of them, but the devil comes and takes it away from their heart so they cannot be believed. Now, the devil can't do anything unless you let him. So he presented it and they bought the lie, right? right? Number two, but when trouble came, now, trouble's going to come. I hate to break it to you. But when it comes, are you going to believe the Word of God? Or are you going to believe and faint at the word of God? Because there it says, and they they when they give up, fall away and depart. They fainted and gave up. Come on. If you expect it to be easy, roly poly, and never have to go through anything, you're going to fail. Your faith will fail. Your seed will fail. It will not come to fruition. But if you'll believe the word of God and stand in faith. It will come through. Come on. The next one is when they let the worries, cares, and anxieties, or it's not always worries and cares. I mean, the enemy will try that one. If that don't happen, he'll, he'll try to tell you. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, they tried to tell you that the world wasn't no fun, and that was a lie. So the devil got a bunch of young people because they wanted to have fun. And you know what? When I tried the world out, I'm not proud of it. But you know what? It was fun for a while. There was some stuff that was fun. You know, feeding your flesh can be fun, but you know, here's the kicker that nobody talks about. Every one of those pleasures comes to an end, and they, every one of them ends in misery. Yeah. Every single one of them. Only thing that doesn't come to pleasure that, do, that doesn't end in misery is living for Jesus at the right hand of the Father. I can have fun. Ha, 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 ha. In the midst of adversity, it's the only one. But you're going to be tempted. What's oh, he's up there preaching about this, and I got to be with work on my fruit, and I got to do this. It was just easier when I stayed home and watch and watch football on Sunday. Why am I even bother going? And the more I know, the more harder it gets. Watch out with this, man! You're missing the seed. You're missing the joy. You're missing the fun, and you're missing the fruit because you're buying into the lies of the enemy, and you got to keep putting the right seed in the ground. Come on. And so then we hear with good, honest hearts. Cling to it and obey. Obey is not a dirty word. Turn to Genesis 49. Genesis 49. How many know we're grafted into the vine? Amen? Amen? Of the children of Israel. I'm going to go a little fast on this today. I'm not going to cover all of this. But uh, this is Jacob who was Israel. And he's blessing the tribes of Israel, blessing his sons. And all of, all of them but one they all have attributes, but when he examined their fruit, he found major shortcomings. And I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this. 
whenever the apostle when the apostle John was writing the book of Revelation, the Lord was showing him things in the future, and he was examining the churches in the last days, and he was finding their shortcomings when he was looking at their fruit. And you're going to find a direct correlation between the blessings of the children of Israel and the shortcomings of the churches in Revelation. And we've been looking at seeds. We've been looking at putting them in there. And I believe we're already there. I believe the churches are already starting to be evident. You can look around at different pockets in the body of Christ and you can see the different churches that are spoken of in Revelation and you can see them alive today. Now, all I can do as pastor is make sure that my life lines up with the Word of God and that I don't become one of those. And I want to bring out one attribute today. One, there's many I can bring. I may touch on it. It's a very deep subject. Y'all see where I'm going? So, first he's talking to Reuben, chapter 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength and excellent dignity and excellent power. So he's not saying he's some wimp, is he? He's like, you got some stuff together. He said, but you're unstable as water. Can God depend on you? Or whenever you're given an opportunity, are you going to fall into a mess? Now God loves you no matter what, right? We've established that over and over. But the question is, do you love God? Are you saying you got to be perfect? No, I'm not perfect. I wish I was. I wish there were certain things I did better. But I do examine my fruit and I do repent and I do turn and I do sharpen my sword and I do sharpen my hand. Y'all hear me this morning? Why? Because I don't want to be a powerless Christian. I don't want to have a powerless church. When someone calls me up and they're dealing with cancer or things, I'm not going to get a spirit of fear. The spirit of faith is going to rise up in me. I'm going to curse that thing. I'm going to cancel it out. And I'm going to know they're going to be healed. Not maybe, not could have, not should have, not would Now, I'm going to be honest with you, whenever I'm sitting, when I'm having to sit down today up here myself, because I'm resisting physical pain and doing things, is there times it's trying? Yeah, everybody that comes to the altar gets healed, except for the guy praying for them. Do you think the devil doesn't try to work that? Or say, well, what, what's wrong with you, preacher? Well, let me give you a hint. I, like I said, it's not about the giftings, but God couldn't flow through me to heal others if I had stuff wrong in my life. Because he said it's the prayers of a righteous man that avail much. Amen. Amen. You see where I'm going? But here, he said, you're unstable water. Thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not excel. And each one of these, one of them's got a temper, one of them's got some other things, and we're going to look at this later on. But each one of them, when their fruit was examined, they found stuff that kept them from walking in the full blessing of God. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. If you were to go ahead and examine yourself today honestly, would you find something that was hindering you yes. from walking in the full blessing of God. And then would you be willing to take that before the Lord and say, Lord, would you prune this for me? I found some fruit that wasn't good and I want to operate in the full blessing of God so that I can take the gospel, the good news, signs and wonders following to the lost and dying world and see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I found this, this is something I've done on a daily basis for years. And I, it wasn't until just this very moment God says, see, I told you to tell them this a long time ago. But see, it's strong meat. It's easy for me to swallow. But when you're presented with it, what are you going to do with it? I took a long time to get here this morning. So are you offended with me? Or are you offended with yourself because you found something? Because we want to all say we're perfect when we're not. But then with the, 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 the Laodicean church, which we're going to look at in a minute, has got people so relaxed in their sin, they don't hold themselves accountable. Well, if I just make heaven, I'm doing okay. It's not about you. It's about what your God is doing through you. 
And by the way, who wants to just get by? Who wants to just come to church to say, I came to church? That's miserable, man. I want to go have fun. I want the joy of the Lord to overtake. I want to see miracles. I want to see people get on fire. I want to see I want to see drug addicts set free again, which we've seen continuously. I want to see people delivered, not go, I'm still struggling. Yeah. Well, let go of it. Yeah. You know, so many times we're talking about these things and people say they're struggling. And you know what I see in the spirit? I see somebody skiing with a rope tied on. And they're just, if you've ever seen a skier, if they don't let go of the rope when they go down, they just go further down. And they're like, I'm resisting. Well, let go of the rope. You're drowning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Unstable as water. Do you know that I found that describes most of the church world today? You, you, you do anything for God, and you, I, I mean, you're rolling the dice. You know, I, I've trained people, put years in ministry and Bible schools, and you still get about one or two percent out of that that you can depend on. And that just depends on what day of the week it is and what mood you're in and what they're dealing with. I'm just being straight. Don't you think God wants people He can depend on? Yes. Hey, i got somebody that's hurting. They've lost a loved one. They're, they're facing this, this, and this. And I want to bring them comfort. But you're going to have to pause your day. You're going to have to not focus on your day. And I want you to go to, uh, to, to Snooks over here, get in line number two, and just smile at them and tell them Jesus loves them. What's that going to do? It's going to do exactly what I wanted to do. And I didn't ask for your opinion about how I wanted you to do it. Oh, pastor asked for this. Oh, praise God. Well, Never mind. I'm going to move on. Unstable as water. Turn to Proverbs 25, 19. Proverbs 25, 19. Look at me having to go old school. It gives you all plenty of time. I kind of like it, this paper Bible again. 2519. I can hear Pastor Billy and Brother Bob. He's like, listen, you should have had all the, if you're going to use a Bible, you should have had all the marks. You could have just flipped right to them. You're wasting time. <laughs> Proverbs 2519. Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Someone that's offended, someone that's hearts jacked up, someone that just is not faithful to the things of God, which is all those seed things. But anybody ever tried to chew on a broken tooth? Is that some, Is that the one you choose to use? The Bible said the laborers are few. Why? Because the church is full of broken teeth. Come on. I'm preaching straight this morning. So, or a foot, and a foot out of joint. Everybody in here was spraying their foot? Did you get very far on that foot trying to use it? Do you want to know why the kingdom of God is not moving forward? I'm giving you a straight prophetic answer this morning. You want to know why, that why we're not seeing the power of God flow in these last days like we've been waiting on? I'm telling you prophetically why this morning. But every time I preach any strong message, usually it hackles up. Now, praise God, this one's anointed and God's gave it enough sad. You know, you guys have swallowed about 49% of it. What you do with it after you leave here today is yet to be determined. Come on, are you hearing me today? Amen. So, now, God's dealt with me through the years. Do you think I liked being called a broken tooth? Do you think I liked realizing I was like a broken tooth? Hey, 
as a pastor, if I called and asked you to do something, how much confidence would you think I would have in having you see that through? What about if I asked you to, uh, you know, would you clean the toilets for the next year and take that responsibility off of Most people go, no, but I would do this or this. Well, I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to do this. I'm going to quit meddling there and move along to the church. But before I, before I lose this point, a lot of times we're not seeing the things come to fruition in our lives, but yet we're not willing to deal with the fruit that we don't that we're keeping hidden. And God's wanting us to deal with that fruit so that we can see those things come to fruition in our lives that we've been praying and standing in faith for. Are you guys hearing Pastor's heart today? All right, turn to Revelations chapter 3. Last scripture. And under the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, saying, that He that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thou works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that they are ready to die, for I have not found the works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, thou hast received and heard, hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt know what hour I will come unto thee. This is Jesus coming back. He's telling you to watch, keep your hearts right. I found a bunch of junk that ain't right, and you need to be examining yourself and your fruit and ready to repent, because I'm going to show up when you least not know it. Okay? And then it says, Thou hast a few names, even the Sardis, which are have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk worthy with me in white, for they are worthy. So he's like, there's a few of you that's managed to actually keep your act together. A few that I found faithful that are fit for the harvest. And he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So did it say he that survived? No. See, most of these people that we're going to talk about are just trying to survive. God's looking for overcomers. And so he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So, these are the ones, he said, otherwise he says, I'm going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. We want to be the ones that our name is written down. Right? Y'all still here? Some of you don't look like it. So he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So these are the, you know, the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against his churches. Now he's saying, you, if you have an ear, hear. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith unto him that's holy. He that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that opened, no man shutteth, shutteth, no man open. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, no man shall shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which saith, there are Jews, there are not, but I do I will, I will make them to come and worship before thee, feet, and make them of them. So he's, he's keeping these people, he's going to, the ones that nobody thought were doing much, uh, jump on down to, uh, Verse 14, for time's sake. And under the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write these things, saith, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would thou wert cold or hot. So you better church, you managed to hang together, but you really ain't done much. Somebody looked at your fruit, they'd say, well, they're a church. And so he said, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Does anybody want to be vomited out of God's mouth? Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. We've already got it all figured out. We've got all the revelation. We're blessed. Just look at us. We're blessed. Sound familiar? But if you're not saving souls, you're not turning the world on fire and able to stand against opposition and stand against all hell coming and got the fruit to show for it, 
then you're you're blind, wretched, and dying. You've got nothing to offer nobody. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. And so, and white raiment, thou mayest be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eyesight, that thou mayest see. Open your eyes, look around, take a residue, look at your character, not what you've convinced yourself you are, what everybody else says you are, and for pity's sake, quit looking at what every other store-bought believer is saying they are. Look at the Word of God. The Word of God is your, is your check sheet. Your Word of God is who you are. Not what everybody else is getting by with. Not what everybody else is doing. Not what the next prosperity guy is proclaiming. Listen, I believe that God wants to bless you and make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God. But I also believe He's not going to trust you with something before He tests you to make sure you're able to carry that thing. I'm ready to turn the world upside down for Jesus. 